Hey guys, Max Knight here, and welcome back to another tryout. Today's tryout is on Death Stranding Director's Cut. Because that's what I was playing. Um, so before I get into this, I need to make it known. I am relatively familiar with this game already, but I've not played it. I watched somebody do a full Let's Play back around the time the game came out. So I know a decent amount about like what happens in the game and it's a narrative and the sort of progression of how you unlock things through the gameplay and all that. But like, it was so long ago that it's not like very, very clear in my head, but I have a, a general idea. So we had, we got this uh, PS4 copy of Death Stranding a while back before we got the PS5, before the PS5 was officially announced, I think. Um, and neither me nor my girlfriend ever got around to it. And so the PS5 now, we have one. And so using the PS4 disc, it was like a $10 upgrade to get the PS5 Director's Cut Edition. So we di I did that before I started playing it so that I could have the best version or whatever for the console. Um, I have a lot of criticism of Sony's upgrade situation, but that's for that's something I don't want to get into right now. So talking about the game itself, uh, it's a very unique and strange game. As if you've clicked on this, you probably know what it is a little bit. Uh, so you probably already know it's a unique and strange game. It's both unique and strange in its base gameplay stuff and in sort of its narrative construction and that sort of thing. The best that I can really describe it is it's like a post-apocalyptic horror adjacent transport sim with some ambient multiplayer mechanics. I'm not sure the best term for that, but it's basically like... And there's also the collaborative community aspects where you've got, you know, see all these ladders that were placed by other people so that, you know, I don't even necessarily have to go around like I was originally planning, I can potentially use these existing ladders. And maybe those are planted ones to show you the concept, but like the, the concept is that other players can leave objects in their game and then those objects will show up in yours. And that ambient multiplayer is the best term that I could think of for describing that. I think this is a really interesting experiment with like gameplay in an engine with all of the sort of high quality visual quality terrain and, and whatnot. Like all that stuff is photo real. Man, these landscapes look good. And then applying a layer of gameplay mechanics on top of that of, you know, balance and weight mechanics there is a lot of intricate detail put into the traversal that you don't necessarily get in other games because on other games this sort of detail isn't really required for what they're trying to get across in the traversal and so you have to manage your weight and your balance and the, you know, the way that your stuff, like the terrain. This game has a lot of those details. And just the fact that they can be there is sort of like a testament to, to how games, how detailed games can be in a more modern time. I, like, I can't remember exactly what year Death Stranding came out. It's been a, out for a few years now. But like, it's really... Just like astounding what they can do in this, the, just with the, the systems that they've built for the traversal, which is really all I've experienced so far. Additionally, as you probably would expect if you know anything about games made by Hideo Kojima, the narrative and its themes are also like a very heady thing. There's a lot of nuance and intricacy to what's going on and I don't think you can really piece it all together just from the beginning part. As I mentioned before, I've already sort of seen the whole game for the most part 
so I have a, a decent idea of the overarching themes and the narrative trajectory, but, like, knowing some of that and seeing some of these early scenes that I don't remember so well, pieces together differently just from the knowledge of the early scenes than from what I know I think it comes to be more towards the end. Um, but it's also, like, very overt with the fact that it has narrative themes. They're, they're repeated. You know, the concepts are stated over and over again. But I think it's in combining these concepts together that it becomes a, a more heady thing where you have to think about how these things build together and the balancing act that it's trying to represent narratively. Death Stranding is certainly not a game for everyone. It's, again, very strange in terms of both gameplay and its sort of narrative construction, its bigger lore. There's a lot of in-universe concepts that even after having seen the full game at some point, I don't totally remember what it all means. You know, how it all fits together in terms of the world. And... Like I said, the gameplay, it's at its like base level, sort of a transport sim. So if you don't like carting things from point A to point B as your main gameplay function, you probably won't really like it. But I think this game is pretty interesting. <laughs> So far I've played like a little over two hours or so. I finished the first episode, the prologue, and episode one, and I started into episode two a little bit. So I'm not that that far. I don't remember exactly how long this game is, but like those cutscenes make it extra extra long, plus the fact that you are traversing on foot, especially in these earlier sections can, you know, it's going to take a lot longer than some other games do. Uh, I think, I don't know exactly what the split is, but I think of my two hours, maybe half of it was gameplay. It wasn't like one half gameplay, like it was split up. There were like three or four gameplay sections that I played and then interspersed in those was cutscenes that were decent length. It's pretty common for Hideo Kojima games to feature a lot of narrative cutscenes. So, like, it's to be expected if you know the game director. But from what I've played, I'm interested and down for playing more. So of what I know of some of the later game stuff, I'm not sure how much I'm going to enjoy some of that. But... The earlier game stuff with the just more basic traversal type situation, I think it will be interesting for me to, to play more of. And I don't know, again, I don't know if I'll finish it, but I'm definitely going to play more, which if you've watched one of these before, uh, that means it passes. If the game, my, my first impressions are enough to be like, yeah, I think I'll play more of that. That means it passes a tryout. So, uh, that's the, the little video here. Those are my sort of impressions and thoughts of the game after about two hours or so. A little over two hours. So I'm going to get to the end bits here. If you go on the description, it links to all sorts of places. Twitter, Patreon, Bandcamp, Redbubble, etc., etc. Kick the links. Go follow or subscribe or whatever you do in those different places. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button. If you want to keep up with this and other shows, hit the subscribe button. I make this show weekly. And then... On and off, I've been doing some news and Let's Plays recently, and then some reduxes of some old covers, alternating weeks on those. So if you want to keep up with everything I do around here, like I said, subscribe, leave a comment. What are your thoughts on Death Stranding? Have you played it? What are your thoughts on Hideo Kojima? Have you played other games by him? Let me know. Uh, share the video. Do the things. Do the things. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!